It's time to kill some bananas with the electric hot dogger. This is the Presto hot dogger that uh, Kim Sleep sent from Canada. And it's a common device that used to be available in America. I don't think they're made anymore. And I recently electrocuted some hot dogs in it because that's how it works. It passes current through them. And the weirdest thing about that video was the number of you that had not come across hot dogs in cans. I thought hot dogs came in cans. You can hear the liquid sloppy about inside. They're basically marinated in brown. I've now found American-style hot dogs in brown. So we're going to take a look at these at some other time. But I also want to, for the shock value, show you hot dogs in bottles. It's, we've got a very weird selection of hot dogs here. But that is not for now. What is for now is the bananas. Because uh, Kevin, one of my friends, said, well, it would be interesting to try other things in the hot dogger. And when we were thinking of things that would fit, uh, bananas came to mind. These are not the ripest bananas, but they are bananas nonetheless. So I'm going to electrocute the bananas, and I'm going to monitor the current as I do so. So let's try and squish a banana in. Is this even going to work? Yes, it is going to work. So let's stick a couple of bananas in initially. And that will give us an indication of the rough electrical current involved in a banana. That one has split at the base, so this is probably a good idea. We're using multiples. This might draw shit tons of current. I don't really know. I've never actually tried passing current through a banana before. They are kind of splitting the bananas. Oh, the bananas are splitting everywhere. They really aren't electrocution friendly. Right. Mmm. Mmm. Banana. Mmm. So let's bring in the Frickery Happy here and analyse the power consumption as we give these bananas the message. So I'm going to close this lid down with the safety interlock and this will generate a bit of steam but I'll give you a running commentary of the power consumption of the bananas. Ready? Right, the current is not very high. It's 12 milliamps. It's only 3 watts of power. This is hugely disappointing. I was kind of hoping the bananas were going to do more than this. Uh, it's not rising. It's just sitting there at 12 milliamps. This is possibly the most boring electrocution video ever. This, uh, this does suggest that um, maybe hot dogs with lots of salt in them are the best thing to fry. Any heat coming off the top? I'm not going to expect much heat. It's, it's up to 3 watts now. You know what? Tell you what, I'm going to pause momentarily and then I'll come back and tell you if anything's actually happened. Yeah, we're up to 4 watts and 16 milliamps after quite some time and I have to say that there's obviously a reason that bananas are not electrocuted on YouTube much. It's not terribly exciting. OK, I'm going to give it a bit longer. I shall pause momentarily and I'll be back shortly. Update several minutes later again. There's a bit of steam. It's up to 30 milliamps, 7.4 watts of power, which is just over 3.5 watts per banana. This is not exciting, but you know what? It had to be done. Let the experiment continue. The current does appear to be getting higher. It's, it seems to be speeding up as it goes on, so something must be happening. Probably depositing metal, depositing metal into the bananas or something like that, but it's now up to 23 watts, which is about, oh, 12, well, it's up to 24 now, 12 watts per banana. And it's up to 100 milliamps. And I can feel a bit of warmth. It's certainly steaming up, so yeah, let's uh, keep going and see what happens. OK, this is better. There's slight 50 hertz noises. It's up, it's up to 133 watts now. Uh, half an amp. And the bananas are bubbling inside. Well, that one's bubbling at the joint between the, the two sections of the banana. Uh, how's the current going? Usually with this thing, what happens is the current will gradually increase up to a certain level and then it sort of dries the bananas out and then it goes back down, or whatever you've got in it, and then it goes back down again. This is better. 60 milliamps, still rising. Uh, sorry, 600, 600 milliamps better still, and still rising. Yep, yeah, okay, so I'll pause a bit more and I'll uh, come back if anything else exciting happens. Oh, and shortly afterwards it starts going down, so I guess that's more or less the bananas done then, if the current's starting to fall. Either that or they've dried out or distorted. I think it's time to investigate this and see what they look like. So um, it's just dropping off 150 watts. The current is going down. 
it's yeah okay let's open it up and investigate oh that's interesting as soon as i unplugged it the banana went limp right so it, the bananas do look somewhat distended the steam is going up uh it's it's red hot as you'd expect it's it's oozed the liquid has oozed out of it um right i I'll give it a moment. This one has not heated up much at all. This one isn't anywhere near as hot. That one's obviously reached critical banana mass and it's gone all mushy inside and that was the one that was going conductive and then sort of running for a while. So I'm going to let it cool down. Then I'm going to try eating a bit and see what it tastes like. Okay, let's try this now. It's cooled. Actually, I completely forgot about it. It's stone cold now. That's kind of spawning. It's a bit... Oh, it's a bit sort of rubbery now and it's gone from it's definitely rubbery this hidden one was hogging on the current mm. it does taste like banana this is not really surprising what about the electrified end mm. slight acidic taste i don't know if that's a reaction to the metal no nah, nothing really special one banana definitely hogged all the current there. I wonder if it had been left long enough, the other one would have sort of started taking the current as well. But uh, that is what I'd call an anticlimax. Uh, electrocuting bananas is nothing particularly special at all.